Hello. Hello. Thank you very much. It's Robert here. How are you? I'm um, well, thank you, Robert. Good. And you? Yeah, yeah, a little bit cold, but never mind. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Today hasn't been a really bad with the weather, though. I mean, in London today, it wasn't as cold as it was yesterday, but it was windy, man. Yes. Really windy. Yeah. Yes, it was windy here in Plymouth yesterday, but the wind's very still today. But it's uh, it's cold. I've got. I, I mean, I, it's a a onesie. It goes from. It's a hood. It's fluffy. I look like a yeti or a bon, um, a bigfoot in it, and it goes right <laughs> down from my head right down to my feet, and it's like a piece of carpet, and it just keeps me very very warm. So if I didn't have this on, I'd be freezing. <laughs> oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. So what did you do today? Yes, what did you do today? Did um, you listen to some e church online? Yes, or? I, yes, I um, listened to some YouTube baptisms in the ICOC, the International Church of Christ. You said you're a, you're a part yeah. of it. And they were yeah. re-baptizing Baptists. The... the Two people had been in a Baptist church and they were rebaptizing them for the remission of sins. It seemed to me that they were basically saying that unless you're baptized by the ICOC, you can't have your sins forgiven. Baptism in other groups like the Baptists and the Pentecostals just isn't recognized. Um, it's, I think it's. I think it's dependent on what is done, though, right? I mean, could you say that again? Could you say that again? I I would think that is not a policy. It is. But it but is. It, it is a policy. On. I I think it will very well dependent on the baptism process that the people went through and whether or not it is. It is biblical, um, and I guess if it's not, then it would be recommended that they they be rebaptized. But if it was biblical in 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 the, you were breaking up. I can't. I didn't understand what you were saying. Perhaps you could just say that briefly and slowly. Okay. Why does the ICOC rebaptize Baptists for the remission of their sins? Isn't it because you regard Baptists and Anglicans and Methodists and everyone else as unsaved? That is not something that I am aware of that we do. Oh, but come on. as I was saying before, if it's something that is done, then oh. it must be that um they have spoken to the person and looked at how they were baptized and if the way it was described wasn't biblical then that's something that would be recommended yes but i wouldn't say that the icoc has a policy that says baptize all baptists again or baptize all anglican again you know what i mean <laughs> Every, it's a bit of a word salad because you're not really telling me straight what you believe. Many religious groups are not upfront about what they believe. Okay, they will say one thing to your face but mean something else. Uh, yesterday when we spoke, I, I referred to George Orwell's book 1984, where it's called Double Speak, Double Talk, Double Think. Now, do I find I have looked at the. Um, ICOC online today did I find a mm -hmm. statement saying all members of Baptist churches are lost and going to hell they have not had their sins remitted until they are re-baptized by us in the ICOC no I don't find that exact statement on your website but I'm never going to even if that is your teaching you're just not going to be upfront about it and, and honest and truthful um, that's the problem that I have. Why did I see two Baptists rebaptized? They'd been baptized already by the Baptists, but the ICOC rebaptized them. Why do you rebaptize Baptists um, for the remission of sins? You, surely it's okay. surely it's to have their sins taken away. That's that's what 
for the remission of sins mean, surely? Yeah, that is it. That is what it is. And as I said before, I haven't read anywhere that that's a policy. Um, I haven't heard that being said. That was never said to me about uh, pre-baptism, Baptist or Anglican or anything like that. But what I do know, even from my own, well, I was baptized in the ICC. I wasn't baptized anywhere else. But I do know that people would be asked, and those people who were studying with them would decide, based on what was told to them, whether the baptism was in, uh, as happened the way it should be. As described in the Bible, and and I and I believe that if it wasn't, then that's when our rebaptism is then suggested. But I am not aware of a policy that says rebaptize all Anglican. Re yeah, all uh, it's Baptist, double talk. You're, you're, if, if that's what you practice, you're not going to admit that online. But it was quite clear on the two videos that I looked at. The Baptists were both regarded as unsaved people, even though they were Christians who believed in Jesus and had been baptized by the Baptists, they were seen as unsaved people until they had been rebaptized by the ICOC. Um, I'm a man in my 60s. Um, from your picture, you look a lot younger than the 60s. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, um, well, I'm, I'm in my 60s. I lived in London. I left in 1990. And mm -hmm. before I left, there was a member of the London Church of Christ. Yeah. Right, which is now the ICOC, or it was it was then, I believe. They just used different different names. And he he followed me around like a lost dog. Now I didn't have we didn't have mobile phones in in those days. Um. But I don't know how okay. he would he would always be there. He'd somehow always be contacting me and always be turning up and inviting me to go to church meetings because he regarded me as a lost person, even though I was baptized in an Assemblies of God church in 1985 and I believed in Jesus. I had a bit of a detour where I joined the oneness um, cult in 1988 and I came out in early 1989, becoming a passionate and zealous Trinitarian. All that meant nothing to him. As far as he was concerned, until I was baptized by the London Church of Christ, I was lost. And he made it abundantly clear to me. And he wouldn't take no for an answer. It was very much high pressure selling. So I know okay. this from personal right. experience and, and online. There are videos of people who are regarded as lost and unsaved, even though they attend Christian churches and they believe in Jesus and they've been baptized. They're regarded as unsaved by the ICOC who are rebaptizing Christians for the remission of sins. These videos that you're referring to, where were they made? Um, YouTube. Both in the UK, in YouTube. And, and when were they made? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I looked at them this morning. Okay, it would be nice to know when they were made. Um, because as I said to you before, the church, the church before two thousand and three, is much different from the church today. In in two thousand three, there was a big split. A faction you know, of the, the church, and the, the, the big division. It was based on on practices, and and I'm very very sure that prior, because I was baptized prior to 2003, I am very sure that the sentiments at the time was um, was that if you weren't baptized in the church, you were not saved. That was a sentiment at the time okay and I, I i i left the church for a while like you you said you deviated i did deviate and on my return in 2012 the church as it is then and now is much different from the church prior to 2003 and i am telling you that some of the sentiments that you 
are now expressing regarding even this guy who chased you around. It's similar to the church prior to that. This is why it's important to know the, the age of those videos because if they were videos made um, during that time... Oh, no. You, uh, no, you, they uh, were uh, YouTube videos over the last YouTube. 10 years. The YouTube videos mm -hmm. made after the last 10 years. Sorry to interrupt you, but they, they, they weren't that old. They were, you know... Um, I mean, I can't give you the exact date that they were made. I'd have to go back and find them again. Um, well, look, I, I feel we're going around in, in circles with this. Wouldn't it be easier for the London Church of Christ, sorry, the, sorry, the international ICOC, to simply clear mm -hmm. up the matter, put a statement on their website? We believe that there are genuine, truly saved Christians in other groups. We don't believe we're the only Christians on earth. And furthermore... We're going to, um, there's a couple of Baptist churches and a couple of non-denominational churches. We're going to be praying with them. We're going to have some prayer meetings with some Baptist groups. You never do that because you don't believe really deep down, your leaders don't, that they're real Christians. Um, I, I don't know, uh, Robert. I would, I would, if I'm going to use that as an indication of our position, then I would say the same thing about Baptists because I am not aware of any Baptist group who has said to us, come on, let's have church together. Um, I'm not aware of any Catholic group who has done a similar thing. Mm. I'm not aware of any other group who has actually approached us to say, you know what, let's meet together and, and worship together. So to use just that as an indication of our position. Um, okay. Well, yeah. I, I tell you, I tell you what, how about this for a test? If you remain silent, would you be willing, to, apart from saying amen, where well, you say amen, can I lead you in prayer? If you can lead me in prayer? Yeah. You, 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 you're saying if you can pray with me? No, I, no, not, saying yeah, amen? Pray, pray with you and I want you to say amen to confirm that you believe that what was said was said to God by a brother in Christ. Yes. Okay, okay, fair enough. Lord Jesus, um, thank you for your love and kindness towards you, uh, f towards us. Thank you for dying on the cross and resurrecting for our sins. Um, we pray now, please guide the pair of us as we look at water baptism. Please let whatever we say honour you and um, whatever is truth, please let us follow that. We both pray for this and we both regard serving you as the most important thing in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. OK. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll hold. Um, I'll hand over to you then. Um, you said you would tell me about water baptism. Yes, I said I would. Do you have a Bible with me? Robert? Yes? Do you have a Bible with It's you? in front of me. Yeah. Okay, this is good. Give me a minute. I am going to go to... Hold on. Yeah. Sorry, can you turn to uh, 1 Peter 3, 21, please? Yes, of course. Let me go there as well. If, As far as Peter 3, yes. 21, yeah? If after this verse, when we've looked at this verse in depth, maybe I could ask a question afterwards, but please go ahead. I don't want to interrupt you, sir. Okay. Thanks for that. 
and in verse 21 can you read it please um i think you should read from earlier on to get the context if you would like if you don't mind but yeah okay yeah, yeah. from for verse 18 for Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in yeah. the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Verse 20, who formerly were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through water. Verse 21, there is also an antitype which now saves us, namely baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, what do you think that means, uh, Robert? I think it's an extremely difficult passage. Um, I was reading from the New King James, which is not always the most accurate, um, verse 18 um, put to death in the flesh made alive by the spirit some Bibles read put to death in the flesh made alive in the spirit um, uh -huh. it then says in verse 19 by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison so after his death there was some message some proclamation that Christ made who the spirits in prison are, whether they're the souls of the righteous dead, maybe it's them, maybe it's the wicked spirits, the spirits of the Nephilim, um, or maybe he's proclaiming his victory to Satan himself. Um, it's difficult, but those are the three options for that verse. So okay. that's the general that's the general context. It's dealing with Christ's resurrection and Christ, Christ's victory over Satan, victory over death and victory over sin that, that brings our salvation. Yeah, agreed? Okay, agreed. And then it gets to verse 21. Well, we've got to go to verse 20 first. Okay. Yeah, I like go to ahead. do things systematically. Um, who formerly were disobedient. That's the mm -hmm. spirits in prison when once the long suffering of god waited in the days of noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few that is eight souls were saved through water now notice they're not saved by the water they're saved by the ark and the ark was on the water so mm -hmm. the water doesn't save anybody the water is the agent of death the water is what is what killed the people um, it's the ark that's the key thing here and the ark is an antitype of Jesus Christ because in the next verse it's Jesus Christ who saves us and the antitype to Jesus Christ who saves us in verse 21 is the ark in verse 20 the water doesn't doesn't save anybody in verse 20 verse 21 so, um, sorry yeah if you go back to the last part of verse 20, it says, In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. It doesn't say they're saved by water. Water was the agent of no, death. Just a minute. It says they were saved not by water, but through water. That's what the Bible says. I'm not interpreting it. Yes. I'm through, exactly what it says. through water does not mean that water saves them. It's the ark that saves and, them. It's the people, the it, eight souls getting onto the ark that saved them. And it saved them from the water. The water was the agent of death. The water is what <laughs> God used to destroy that wicked world or the wicked people on the world. There's all sorts of um, theories about... Um, why that happened and i would um i would be very impressed with an american scholar who died recently uh, very very um he was basically talking about how the genetic line of humanity was corrupted by the seed of the nephilim from genesis 6. so in other words yeah the bible the bible says that yeah yeah so that i would lean in that direction but to be honest with you i'm not a scholar i don't have 
you know, the necessary knowledge of biblical Greek and Hebrew to talk with any authority on this matter. But um, I was very, very uh, impressed by his arguments and his explanation uh, in that, oh, okay. which 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 yeah, also yeah, which also explained why Israel were told to kill entire tribes of people, men, women, and tr- children. And people today would say, well, you know, that that makes God evil. If God is telling people to kill men, women and children, but hold on, if they're not fully human, if they have a genetic genetic corruption where they may be 98 percent human and two percent the seed of the Nephilim or whatever, then. um, Because that seemed to be Satan's plan, Satan's plan seemed to be to destroy the salvation of mankind through Christ by correct by corrupting human human seed. Um, but anyway, yeah. perhaps I'm going off topic. So thank you, thank you for your yeah. patience with me. In verse twenty, the yeah. eight souls are saved while they're in the ark, and they're saved. It doesn't say they're saved by the water; they're saved by the ark that went through the water. The ark travelled through the water. The water was the agent of death. The ark is what saved the people in verse twenty, okay. and the ark pictures Christ in verse twenty-one. Just a minute. I want you to read the last part of verse 20 that started with, in it, only a few people, eight in all. What does it refers to there? It's referring to the eight people that were on the ark. Uh, I believe it refers to the ark. In it, Noah, sorry, prior to that it says, uh, in the days of Noah, while the ark was being built, in it, and I think that refers to the ark, only a few people were, a few people, eight in all. So it there refers to the ark. Can we agree on that? Yes. And then it then says, were saved through water. Is that in your Bible? Yes, and it's saying okay, it's saying that just the ark Robert. it's saying that the ark is what saved them, but it's, uh, it's the Robert. ark that travelled through the water. The water didn't Robert. save anybody in Noah's flood. The water was uh, the agent of death. Robert, th- th- there are there are, are no having... there are no scholars that I know who take your position that the water saved people. Uh, Robert. Robert. I'm not a child. I'm in my 60s. If you could treat me with some respect, I would be grateful. Also, you will find there are no scholars who take your position that the water saved people in verse 20. Unless you can name a Hebrew scholar who, or a Greek scholar who takes your position. Robert, I'm very sorry if you felt as if I'm treating you like a child, but I... I believe you are adding interpretation instead of taking the Bible for what it is. And I want to take it from verse 20 into 21. But what you are doing, you are injecting your thoughts while I am reading and stating exactly what the Bible said. Now, if you rather believe a scholar than the word of God, then then so be it. That's up to you. And and actually, we can stop having this conversation if we if you want to believe scholars, because what I'm t- explaining to you or showing and you nobody who's edu- no, to- nobody who's educated takes your position on verse twenty. Um, now, if uh, no one who knows the I, I'm not a Hebrew scholar or a Greek scholar, but no one who's educated that I know of takes your position in verse twenty when it says there is also an antitype which now saves us. The antitype is revealed as Christ, and the antitype references back to the ark. Because the eight souls were saved because they had their feet planted on the ark, and the ark saved them from the water. It doesn't say they were saved by the water, okay? They're saved by the ark, which travelled through the water. Verse 21, there is also there is also an antitype which now saves us, namely baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is that antitype, and he's the antitype to the type, which is the ark. 
because it's the ark that saves in verse 20 and it's Christ that saves in verse 21 and the symbol of our of our being saved in Christ is baptism I certainly I believe in baptism I'm not against baptism but it's Christ who saves I don't need to go to some preacher boy and that preach only when the preacher boy puts water on me am I saved now I'm not too sure what the Catholic position is on this verse because Catholics do believe in what's called baptismal regeneration but um, I mean it's, it's a fairly clear-cut passage it's Christ who saves in verse 21 he's the antitype not to the water in verse 20 but to the ark the ark is the type in okay. verse 20 Christ is the antitype in verse 21 and it's Christ who saves and that's symbolized by the ark that saved the eight souls from the water um, Robert, mm -hmm. if if you are sure about baptism, why are we having this conversation about it? Well, because I spoke to a international um, ICOC person online. I was mm -hmm. bombarded with the list of scriptures, Acts two thirty eight. Acts 22 16 and so on I wasn't it was via text I wasn't given the chance to really reply and I'd like to know do you have any good evidence that a person has to be baptized by water to be saved if you have um, to be baptized to be saved this okay. is not the verse to go to because this verse is so ambiguous now I'm not okay, too, let, let, you, let you me, have to go to a clearer me, verse because you base your Bible teachings on clear teachings of Scripture. You don't go okay, to some vague finish. verse. Let me finish uh, this one then, and um, then it can go on. Uh, and so in verse 21, it referenced the ark. Um, and it know we in the ark. It says, in just a minute, just, just let me finish. Let me tell you what my what the Bible's position and therefore my position is. Um, it, it's in it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved. And it there refers to the ark. It says, we're saved through water. Then it went on in verse 21 and it says, this water, not the ark, this water symbolizes baptism that saves you also. Which version are you down. reading? Just a minute, uh, Robert. Yes, please. which, which <laughs> version Robert, are you reading? Uh, Robert, you just I, you just read from the NIV. No, I didn't you read from the from NIV. The... I told you at the start I read from the New King James version. Okay. I don't always Can agree with 21? the New King James version. Are you reading okay. from the NIV? Because I'll go to yes, the I NIV am. if you want. Okay, am. let Can, me go you there. Read yours again? Can you read yours again for me? Because. Uh, from verse 20 because it you actually said exactly what it says here there's a difference though a slight difference but if you go back stay, stay remain in the king james and at the end of verse 20 does it say in it only a few people eight in all were saved through water does yours say that um, i didn't say i'm reading from the king james i said i've read from the new king james version and each of the okay. Bible translations have their strengths and weaknesses. No one is perfect, uh, can you, can, including can you the NIV and including the New King James again? Version. Yes. What do you want me to read? The, the, the end of verse 20, please. That starts with, in it, only a few people. Yes, of course. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get the verse in Bible Gateway on the NIV. Uh, I do apologize, sorry. Right, um, verse 20, New King James Version, 1 Peter 1.20, who formerly were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which, that's the ark, a few, that is, eight souls were saved through water. Verse 21, there is also an antitype which now saves us, namely baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, so yours doesn't say this water symbolizes baptism that no saves you. It says um, there is also an antitype which now saves us, namely baptism. 
And I, I, I do believe that the Bible says there's only one baptism. The Bible talks about baptism in water. It talks about the baptism of the spirit. I would see those as two sides of the same coin. We're baptized in the spirit um, when we come to salvation. But to signify that we have become Christians, OK, um, we would undergo water baptism as an outward sign to our fellow Christians that we have we have come to Christ. So rather confusing, the Bible says one one baptism, I think is Ephesians four, four or four, five, somewhere around there. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. But the Bible says there's baptism in water and there's baptism in the Holy Spirit. So the two are really two sides of the same coin. One is spiritual, one is one is physical. Baptism in the spirit saves us. Water baptism is something we do as an outward sign of our dedication to to Christ, that we've we died with him because baptism signifies Christ's death, his burial and his resurrection. Okay. Resurrection to um, new life in in Christ. I want to take you elsewhere. Well, hold on. Um, we, we agreed one. You would do one thing. So. Finish off what you've got to say on this, but then it's it's my turn next because that's fair, isn't it? Rather than you just. Oh, I'm I'm just taking you to another verse, another place in the Bible. Yeah, but um, isn't it my turn to ask you, to go to another verse? Shouldn't we do that in turn to be fair? Okay, go yeah, ahead. Okay. Um, I'm very curious about Christ on the cross, Luke 23, 43. 